guys, so, um, the new subject is, um, 20 things, so I'm going to be telling you 20 things that I love about the Gemma Doyle trilogy. The first thing I love about it is that it is a trilogy. Um, I know a lot of people said they want a fourth book, and while I certainly wouldn't complain if there were one, um, I think that the last one ended in a good, albeit sad, place. Um, so I'm, I'm satisfied with it. Uh, but like I said, if the fourth book comes along, you can bet I'll be getting it in hardback and paperback and, um, audio, CD, and all that good stuff. The other thing I love about it is... The author! Little Bray! Um, she's my favorite author, and, um, I just find her writing and her sense of humor really inspiring, and, um, I really, really want to read her one day. Um, and yeah, she's just written the best trilogy in my opinion. The covers. Okay, can we just say amazing? I hope that they never change them, because I think they, um, they show what, they, they really represent the series well. Um, it's like, this one, this one's my favorite, followed by The Sweet Bar Thing, which I specifically left at school, and then Revelate. The Magic. Because, um, you know, even though obviously it's not real, uh, it's, it seems very real when you read the books. And, um, really that's the only thing that matters when you're reading about it, that at that point in time, it seems real. The character. Um, one of the things I love most about these books is that, um, even all the characters are so complex, they all have a lot of different layers. Um, I mean, obviously Gemma, but a really good example is Felicity. Um, you don't find out until the second book some of the comments that she makes, um, and I also like some characters that will seem really small and passing, to not be really big characters, like Willem and the Wyatt, who, um, I think she, I think she was first mentioned in the RA, but I'm not sure, maybe in a bit in Tokyo. But anyway, um, you know, she's just the author of some books they read, and by the sweet part thing, it turns out that she's a huge part of that story. Right, period. Um, I've been really obsessed with the Victorian era since I was like six or seven, and I read the Samantha American Girl book. So I'm glad to have found a book of higher level that can keep my obsession going. Gemma, um, she's aw she's an awesome enough character to deserve her own category. Um, I think Gemma is very sort of Elizabeth Bennet-ish in that anyone who reads it can see themselves in her, um, at least a little bit. I also like that she's not perfect. Um, while I would love to have Jem as a friend, there were some points, especially in the sweet bar thing, where I was like, seriously, Gemma, come on, what are you doing? And that just makes the character more interesting to me. The fact that I found other authors through them. Um, I, when Maureen Johnson and Libra Bray made their first video together, I decided to look up Maureen Johnson, and, um, I started reading her blog for a while. And then over this last summer, I started reading her books, and now, not only have I read all of them, I own all of them too. Um, this is obviously not all of them. Uh, I stupidly left Sweet Scarlet at school, and my sister is reading 13 Little Blue Envelopes. But, and I'm working on this one right now, and I love it. The clothes. Um, while I know firsthand how much clothes it suck, um, the dresses themselves were very pretty, um, and I would love to wear one of them. And um, I also love how Liv describes the clothes, and to demonstrate that, I'm going to read um, my favorite clothes-related excerpts, which is from Rebel Angel. <coughs> I do hope these girls will do, she tucks the seamstress, makes a last-minute adjustment to my gown, a white stretch of satin. The color young ladies wear to the opera. Grandmama has had my first opera gloves sent round from White Lee's department store. The seamstress flips the pearl button through the loops at my wrist shutting my naked arms away behind expensive kid leather. My hair has been artfully arranged for my face with flowers and machine oil. And of course, I put on Simon's lovely necklace. When I spy myself in the mirror, I must admit that I look quite lovely, like a true and proper lady. I love that. <laughs> All of the theater stuff, um, you might know that I, um, I want to be an actress. I'm going to school for acting. Um, and I just, I love to read about it, so when I found out that Anne loves acting and singing, I've been rooting for her since the first book. So in the sweet part thing, when she finally gets a chance to, you know, strut her stuff on the stage, 
um, I was cheering for it the whole time. And I was also really excited to meet Lily Trimble, um, from the first glance of her at, in London, in A Great and Terrible Beauty, I wanted to meet her. So when she was in some scenes, I was really excited, um, and I could just, I just feel it in the excitement. Um, because, you know, it's, I've gone through something like that. And I just love it. The past week of a movie, as long as I don't screw it up. Um, another thing that I like is the guy. Um, Kartik, Simon, Tom, Falcon. Uh, it certainly doesn't hurt that the first three are quite attractive in their own ways. Um, yes, even Tom. I like Tom and Simon, you know, in the beginning. I think guys, having guys in the novel is also important because it shows how women were expected to act with that around them, um, how they go against that, and also the difference between male relationships and female relationships, um, and, you know, how much freer the guys really were back then. The fact that I'm now in two YouTube groups that are specifically about this series, um, you know, it, it takes a special series to have dedicated groups making weekly videos about your books. Um, and I like that it's created and run by girls who love the books. Um, you know, it shows that we can like a book enough to spend a good amount of time obsessing <laughs> over it, um, and, you know, sharing that with other people. I also really like, um, the emotions it puts me through. Um, not only has this series made me laugh a lot because of Genesis' humor, but I've also cried a lot. Um, and I've been really scared and, you know, giddy when Gemma is with Simon and Carson. You know, I'm really nervous for Anne and her auditions. And I, I think that R.A. was, like, this only the second book that ever made me cry. Um, which, and now I cry over, like, a lot of books and movies and stuff. But that one, you know, it was really good and it moved me. Gemma's sense of humor! which is basically identical with my own. Um, we're both very sarcastic, and I think that helps me really appreciate her comments more. Um, yeah, I find her to be very funny. Any book that requires me to mark it up like this is a book worth reading. Um, favorite quotes, favorite scenes, favorite lines. Where I am in one of my readings, I have another bookmark in there somewhere it's lost. Because I, when I open it, I can just be like, I know exactly where I am because I know this book so well. Um, the fact that it was there for my last year of middle school, all four years of high school, and now it's still my favorite in college is amazing. The setting. Um, I love the whole boarding, reading about the whole boarding school thing because I have never been even stepped foot in a boarding school. So, you know, it's, it's an entirely alien idea to me. Um, I also like reading about London. I can't say that I love London because I've never been there. But I can only say that for three more months. So, yeah, I love reading about that stuff. All the great friends I've made because of these, this series. Um, online, at school, the IMDb boards. Uh, yeah, it's just great. I mean, the fact that we have so many people that we can't track them down on the internet and have to create our own website. It's a pretty cool fan base there. And lastly, the fact that it only took me ten minutes to come up with this entire list.